good whatever it is. It's four o'clock. Good afternoon. Uh, finally got the Kenworth back together. Dad was doing that. I made some more bags. Helped uh, the butcher man get the last couple of steers done this morning. And uh, now we're hauling canola. So basically the price is low enough that we think we can probably haul it now. So the process here is quite straightforward. You've got to pull in, you got to push that little uh, call button back there. Untarp your truck. They're going to jab this Canada arm in here, get themselves a sample. So depending on what grain elevator you go to, they may or may not uh, probe at the probe here sign and then they bend these arch ribs or whatever that uh, hold your tarp straight. One of these ones was bent by an L I think maybe that one right there. But that's okay. One thing I noticed this year is the uh, canola seems to be like a bit heavier. Like I think I might uh, might have a little too much on here, but I went uh, panic central when I was loading it. It was loading so fast and it was so icy that I couldn't control my life. So we will see. Oh. Look at this just just junk you know and then and then most of it looks just all right oh i think also the kenworth itself could do from uh benefit from a cleaning so then they got the fancy stop and go lights here i uh not at this elevator but at another one i wasn't paying attention and i just about went uh full go time when they had the red light on so I'm not exactly sure what that arm probe thing of a jig is worth, but I just about ripped it right off a couple years ago. But back to the Kenworth being dirty. I uh, I am not a chrome guy. I'm not into that at all. So there's guys that'll haul and uh, you know, if one of their clearance lights goes out, they go full panic mode or if they get a speck of dirt on their fin uh, steps or whatever, they go just totally nuts, take their shoes off in the truck. I couldn't be bothered to do any of that. Um, this year I finally found some hubcap covers to put back on or whatever you want to call them, those stupid caps. And that itself, that in itself, that itself, whatever, was so much stress because they didn't quite fit. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not into that kind of aftermarket stuff or even replacing it when it falls off, unless of course it's a, you know, requirement for a CVIP. But I, uh, so I had no idea what I was ordering. I just assumed they were all the same. Well, they don't fit. You got to alter them, this, that, and the next thing. And stuff like that is just such a pain in the, pain in the, so you don't even, like to me, I, I'm not inspired to do it. I get no joy out of it. But let's get pulled in here and see what we weigh. So for me, 63.5 is, uh, is uh, like, that's it. That's a legal load for me. We're just going to call it a legal load and just leave it at that.
I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear me or not, but one thing I found interesting, so if you see, there's really not that much in that front locker. This one's kind of full. This one's pretty full because I fell on the ice trying to get to the truck. But uh, the cannoli itself seems to be heavier than it was last year. And I've never done a bushel weight. In fact, I didn't really... I mean, I know that 50 pounds per bushel is kind of the thing, but I've never seen the chart, like for, they have a chart for wheat and peas and or wheat, barley and oats. I've never seen a, a bushel weight chart for canola. I'm assuming they do have one. But I was at the elevator today and I asked the, uh, the guys in there, I said like, have you ever done a bushel weight on canola? Or do you, have you noticed that the canola this year seems heavier than it did in previous years because I've heard the old boys talk about in wet years and stuff that the canola just won't weigh up so anyways he did one and this canola is 54 pounds per bushel now that's like 8% more so if you're gonna it's, it's one thing to take into account when you start to buy your seed for the next year um, if you can get 8% more yield just off of weight you know, you might you might be better off buying a cheaper bag of canola and forgetting to try to forgetting about trying to get that higher yield, just get a heavier product. If if that's the way it works, I don't know. It's just this year I really noticed that the canola is much heavier, it takes a lot less to fill these super bees up to a legal weight than it has in well, the past. Well, good morning. Day two here, which is Thursday morning. Day two of the canola haul. So I only got one load in yesterday. We kind of uh, horsed around all day. Getting this put back together, making some bags, doing whatever it is that farmers do. But now we're ready to go. So it's a little after eight. Carl's nicely warmed up. I think I got a bad battery. Seems to always be charging at like a little over 14, which I'd rather have a little over 14 than, you know, flirting around that 12 and a half, 13. But I have a feeling I'm gonna just wear this alternator right out. So that'll be something we'll check once we get this hauled. All right, well, now she's uh, a little bit of labor involved to load out the last load. But uh, folks might find this interesting. So to center unload these bins, these are 10,000 bushel bins, we run this pipe from the door and it runs halfway into the bin. Then you stick your grain back pipe down there. Then there's enough room for it to get air and enough room for it to uh, get enough grain. So it still actually loads fairly fast. But the one thing we ran into the first year was because of the slope of the grain going to the middle, couldn't open the door and get in. So we cut a big hole out and built a 90 for our grain back. So that far in, once the grain stops running to the middle of the bin, you just stick the pipe in here, it sucks the grain away from the door, and then you can open up the door and hop in. Also being perforated like this, you can hook a sock up there and you can actually blow air into the bin. Now, you won't be able to dry it because that's, that's just not enough, right? With a 24 foot diameter bin, the air, you'd be naive to think the air is getting far enough out. But what it does do is it assists that natural migration of the, of the moisture and the heat and it shoots it up. And we know by having the cables in the bin that when you turn the fan on, uh, it moves that heat right up and out. So uh, once we've left the fan on, say for a week or two, then we take that load out because while it moves the heat out, it doesn't move the moisture out. That's another crazy thing about these grain bags. It seems to really depend on like air pressure, atmospheric pressure, if they're gonna load really fast or not. So I would say right now, this is loading 
every bit as fast as an 8 inch auger, you know, maybe even as fast as a 10 inch. And uh, once I start adding pipes and getting out there, it's going to slow down quite a bit. But for now, it seems to be working pretty good.